Welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you step by step how to create a tank tread in Blender and how do we actually get it to deform in this way. Now you could just create an array on like a track and then kind of have it deform along a curve but the problem with that if we did it that sort of way then the actual tank treads themselves would deform and bend which is not what we want but with this setup here you can see that the actual tracks are staying in one piece as I move this along the x-axis here. They're actually bending around a curve, but they're staying in one piece without deforming, which is just a lot more accurate. So I'm gonna show you step by step. We're gonna model a simple tread and then we'll create the setup here. I really hope you guys enjoy this. I will be uploading the final blend file to my Patreon. Um, this is just a fun little rig. Yes, it's not complete, so there are some changes you'd have to make if you wanted it to like rotate like this, but just going straight back and forth. Um, this is a cute little rig, and I think it'll be fun as a beginner, just learning how to set this up and using it in maybe one of your projects. So let's jump in, and I hope you guys enjoy following along. So when you scene open up in Blender, go ahead and select all of the default objects and press delete. And then we're gonna to go to a front orthographic view. So the front orthographic view. And then we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna to go to our curve options. And we're gonna add in a uh, Bezier circle over here. And then we're gonna go RX90, we're gonna hit enter. And then just go control A or command A and just apply that rotation. And then go into edit mode. And in edit mode of all of these points selected, just go S, X and scale it out like so. And then grab these two middle verts and go S and just kind of scale them down just a bit. So something like this should be perfectly fine. We're then going to go back into object mode. So this is going to be our path that the tracks are going to follow. And now we're going to go shift A. We're going to go to our mesh options. We're going to add in a plane. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go and give this plane under our modifiers. We're going to go add modifier, search and type in MIR and click on mirror. And let's turn it off for the X and enable it for the Y instead. And let's enable the clipping. Now if we tab into edit mode, and we're still kind of like, this is the, from the front perspective. This is what we're seeing from the front. We're just gonna go G, Y and move it towards us until it kind of clips together like so. So you can see it's running along this Y axis. And then um, let's just go tab back into object mode and go S to scale it down about this big. And then we're gonna go control A and we're just gonna apply the scale. That's important. And let's tab back into edit mode. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our top orthographic view. So I'm gonna press seven on my number pad to do that. And I'm gonna hover over here and go control R. I'm gonna double click to add in a edge. Then I'm gonna to go to my edge select option and then select this edge over here. So the one to our right. And we're gonna go E to extrude and extrude it out like so. And then let's grab this one over here and go E to extrude and extrude this one out. Click and then go S to scale. So something like that for now. And let's just leave it at that. And we're gonna go add modifier, search. And let's type in array. Give this an array modifier. And it should um, hopefully be set right here. So at the moment, the X is what we want. So we're gonna just kind of move it in a little bit get it a little bit closer and then let's give it a count of maybe like three. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna get rid of it anyway. We just wanna see how this works. So now in edit mode, we can kind of grab this guy over here down at the bottom and kind of move it in. There we go. And then we can grab this guy here, make our adjustments. And we can always come here and adjust. We kind of just want this track to sit inside of the next track kind of like that. And um, if it's a little bit too far, we can bring this in. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you kind of get the idea here. And I'll bring this in a little bit. Okay, we just want a little bit of a gap. And um, if you want to, you can then go Control R, double click, add in a loop here, maybe select this vertex, bring it in a bit. Something like that, there we go. I think that's a nice looking tread. We're gonna go A to select everything, E to extrude, and let's extrude it up to give it some thickness. And then let's go over here. We'll get rid of this array modifier and we'll go add modifier search and we'll type in bevel, give it a bevel and let's just bring that amount down like so. And let's come to drop down and apply it. Actually, I should do that in object mode. You gotta go into object mode, then come to the drop down and apply. 
And uh, yeah, that's looking good. I'm gonna right click and just go um, shade auto smooth. That's looking good. And we can also come here to the mirror and apply that. And there we have it. Okay, so now we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh options. We're gonna add in a plane. We're gonna go S, so we're gonna scale this plane till it's about the size of our track tile here. We're gonna go Control A or Command A and apply that scale. We're then gonna go to our object properties and we're gonna go down to um, our instancing. Let's make it face instancing. And then let's select this track tile the, the, over here. And this is hold and shift and select the actual plane that we added in secondly. So first select the track, then the tile um, plane down here. And then we're gonna go control P or command P and let's go object keep transform. So now we've parented it like so. So now if we go ahead and we go to our modifiers, we go add modifier and let's add an array to this plane. You can see now that even though if we tab into edit mode here, you can see this is just actually just a plane. It's actually now instancing in our array over here. Okay. So even though it looks like we've got that track selected, we don't actually, we just have the plane selected and then this track here is getting instanced on there. So if we want to get the spacing right here, what we're going to do is we're just going to tab into edit mode with this plane selected. And we're going to go S, X, and just scale it on the X like so. Tab back out. If it's still not right, just scale it on the X a little bit more. Okay, I got to scale it up just a bit. So we just want it fitting in there like that. There we go, that's looking really good. And now I'm going to go to the count here and make something like 25. Okay. And then I'm gonna go add modifier, search and type in curve. And let's give that a curve modifier. Click on the eyedropper and then select our curve here. And there you can see that's what we have. Really, really cool. Now the only thing is over here that it's kind of inverted. So what we can do is we can just select our track and we can go RX 180 and hit enter just to rotate it around. And now you can see this is looking really good. Okay. You can also grab this track and you can just go S to scale it until any of the gaps closes. So I'm gonna go about that much, there we go. And that's it, it's looking really good. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is just select this reference track, I'm gonna go M, just move it to its own collection, go ahead and create it. Okay, so it doesn't actually, when you turn that off, it actually hides it over here on the track as well. So what I'll just do, it's so I'll just press H to hide it and then it's out of the way. But we still want this plane here selected. And let's double click, click on the plane and call it track. So we know what it is. And what we're going to do, we're going to go shift A. We're going to go to our um, empty options. Let's add in a cube. And then let's actually select our Bezier curve. Let's tab into edit mode and let's just with everything selected, go G, Z and move it up till it's sitting right on top of the floor here. Like that, let's go back into object mode. And then let's grab our empty, move it up a little bit, maybe scale it down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our Bezier curve and holding in shift, we're gonna select the empty. So Bezier curve first, then the empty. And let's go control P and go object, keep transform. And now if we select this empty and we go G, X and move it, you can see this is what we have. Now it looks like um, if we grab this empty and move it along the X, so G, X, you can see um, it's kind of sliding backwards. So all we have to do is just select our, let's just go under the empty here and just select that Bezier curve over here. Tab into edit mode and with it all selected, just go R, Z, 180 and flip it around. Then go back into object mode. And now if we select this empty and go G, X, you can see that's working correctly. There we go. And that's pretty cool. Um, I might just select a track, tab into edit mode and just scale this down on the Y. As we don't really need to see it that much. It can just be a really thin band like that. But you can see over here, that's really, really cool. And the cool thing is here that each track here that you see is actually, bend, um, is actually um, moving the way it should. It's not just deforming completely to the actual curve. Because if we just added this directly to the curve, it would actually be deforming the plates themselves, which would not be accurate. In this case, you can see here, this works beautifully. And uh, yeah, really like that. So what I did with mine is I just grabbed it 
In fact, we want to just go Alt H to bring back this tile down here, the original one that we have here, and just select it and go to your materials, give it a new material. Um, I'm just going to go to my viewport display, kind of make it darker. I'll tab into edit mode and then kind of just select the inside ones here. And I'll create a new material and assign it. I just think it's kind of cool to see the kind of like color difference. But there we have it. That's, um, yeah, a tank track in a blender. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.